Welcome back. We're working on no tan today and first off I want to show you how to do a no tan with the black sharpie and then we'll do it with paint. So to start with you're going to draw a rough outline of the proportion of the picture plane that you're working with. And I'm going to make this one predominantly dark and I'm looking at where the pattern of lights and darks are in that same photograph that I worked with last week. And only superficially working with line, mainly with shape. And there's some linear motifs in here with the shadows, but they are not going to end up looking particularly linear when we're done. So I'm looking at value relationships. That pattern of light and dark that creates such strong visual interest in the composition. So very quickly, I'm going to start filling that in so that it doesn't look as linear anymore. And I'm looking at that strong relationship between dark and light. And remember in the concept video I talked about making sure that you assign those grays to either the light or the dark in such a way that you end up with roughly uh, at least a 60-40 relationship so that your composition is predominantly dark or predominantly light. You do not want 50-50. That leads to visual boredom not what you want. And again, one of the reasons for using the Sharpie is that the Sharpie prevents you from getting too caught up in the details. So if you want to work in your sketchbook, I would strongly recommend that you do, oh, at least five to ten of these in your sketchbook. Try to do a couple a day and it'll make a big difference in how you begin to see those patterns. That took all of about maybe a minute so that's how long you need to spend on them. It'll take a little longer to start with, but work up to that. So that's the no tan with the Sharpie. Next, I want to show you how much paint to put out when you're working on something roughly this size, how much we'll need for today. So I've got a quarter in the palette box so that you can see about how much we're going to use. And I would squeeze out about a quarter size, maybe a little larger daub of the black. We're not going to be using white. That's why I have the white and the gray towards the top of the palette box. We're just using black today. So squeeze out roughly about a quarter size shape daub of paint. Then when we look at how to hold the knife, I want you to see that I'm holding it way back by the handle, not towards the tip. And as I paint, I'm going to put roughly that much paint onto the knife, holding it like this. And I can twist it and turn it to apply the paint. To have even more control when you're doing details, you're going to put even less on there at one time. But don't load it up too much. Okay? Start off with just a little bit. As we're working with just the black, it's going to take about a quarter of an inch amount on the end of it per mark. And remember our mantra for that, make a mark, leave it, wipe your knife. Not as important to wipe your knife when we're working just with one color, but sort of at least in the back of your mind, get in the habit of thinking that way. So now we're going to jump into doing that same exercise with paint and using the number 81 knife. So again, just like I did with the marker, I'm going to establish where those basic shapes are very quickly. Hopefully the sun won't get in the way too much. really light lines at this point because those are not going to stay lines. Really more like daubs of value. 
so that you are establishing values, not really worrying about making lines with the knife. Again, notice how much paint I've got on there. Very small amounts to start with. So, just beginning to build up where those value relationships go. And noticing that pattern that's so strong of the shadows falling across the snow. Although I'm not remotely ready for snow yet. Hopefully we won't have any this year. Then I'm going to establish where the top is. And again, I'm doing the same selection for those grays. I'm going for a predominantly dark no tan here. So I'm going to push the grays that were in that photograph into dark values. And then fill it in. It's actually much quicker to do this with the bigger knife if you're working with palette knife. So if you've got that 109 or 106, you can take that and very quickly fill in that blank. That's one of the things that makes it really easy for me to work outside in the landscape and work quickly under changing light. Having a tool that's going to fill things in and work really rapidly. It's one reason people will tell you to work with the largest tool that you've got. Part of it is that working large keeps you from getting that inicky finicky uptight obsession with details going. That gets in your way. You can make this as detailed as you want later, but you need to understand those fundamental underlying value and shape relationships. And focusing on the no tan helps you do that. It helps you to flatten out what you're seeing in three dimensions into something that's more two-dimensional. So it's the beginning of the abstraction process which is something a lot of people don't think about when they're painting representationally. You are still abstracting. Every time you take a photograph or you make a painting or you make a drawing, you are abstracting. So the degree of abstraction that you choose to leave on there is up to you. But you are always, in some way, shape, or form, abstracting. So understanding how to do that and do it quickly will help you have an underlying structure in your painting that will make the painting hold together even if you haven't figured out what to do with the colors. Now one of the things that I emphasize in doing this is getting in the habit of not putting the paint on too thickly for the no tan because we're going to use no tan in our next module to begin understanding how to block in a painting and when you do that, that no tan should be fairly thinly applied. Do not thin it down with a whole lot of medium. Instead, apply it thinly. So that means scraping with that knife to get it on there thinly. And I'm going to demo in just a minute how to do that with the brush. So we're going to see two of them. I'm going to do the light one with the brush. Now I would recommend that y'all do this on a piece of canvas or board that is no larger than this main one that you see here, the 5 by 7 and that you divide it into fourths and do a different no tan on each one so that you explore variations in ways to develop that composition without switching the composition but just changing the way that you assign the light and dark values. Okay, there's our predominantly dark one. Next up is the painted one that's predominantly light.
Now we're going to approach that with a brush. Now I want you to look at the size of the brush that I've got here. It's quite large. This is a number 12 and it's a filbert. This is uh, a Zen brush made by Royal and Langenickel and it's one of my favorites. It's a hog bristle brush. Very inexpensive, um, but they hold up really well to a lot of abuse. But I really would strongly recommend that you not go any smaller for this exercise than around a number 8 brush. 8, 10, or 12. The bigger, the better. The reason you want the large brush is to keep yourself from going for details. You want to go for large shapes. So hold the brush like this by the handle at the end. Remember that it's not a pencil. So you're not drawing, you're painting. So hold it by the end more like you would a large spatula. So you'll see that it's not that different in the way you handle it than a knife. So I'm going to pick up some paint roughly about that much and again just like before I'm going to mark off with small daubs where that basic relationship of light and dark goes and keep it very light so that I have lots of space to make corrections especially since I don't have any white paint out remember we're just working with the black so I want to keep those marks light so I can make changes if I need to I'm noticing that's a nice sharp angle right there probably more than I put in the last to no tan because again every time you do this you will notice more about the composition that you're working with you'll pick up more individual detail and remember that in this one we are working with the predominantly light values so I am looking for putting all of the middle grays towards the light end of the spectrum and being left with the predominantly dark values only occupying about roughly a third to a fourth of the composition. So it's going to take about a fourth. So all of those big areas of dark that we had in the bottom to begin with are greatly diminished now. And notice I'm not getting caught up in the details, nor am I using any medium at all. I think people have a strong tendency to use way too much medium when they're painting. It not only weakens the paint film, but it actually makes it harder to work. So keep it light. The lighter you keep it, the more painterly you are in approaching it, the better off you're going to be. So I'm hoping that all of you who are working with the brush have left the medium at home, so to speak. Whether you're working in acrylics or oils, there is just no need for medium at this point. I want you to get a feel for the body of the paint that you're working with and not rely on medium to skimp on paint. Pay close attention to the angles of the shapes that you're working with so that I'm noticing that it's a sharper angle right here on this shape and then as it gradually descends over to the edge it's a much slower angle. That helps to give me the characteristic of that landscape. And that is pretty much it. I'm going to add in one other line. Notice I just now switched the angle that I'm holding it at because I want to work in the tree trunk that is dominant here that goes from the bottom to about there. And I can add a few of the others, more linear elements. 
but don't lose the sense of mass here that is such a strong part of that composition. One more stroke, because I think it's important that this tree over here is a little taller than this one, but not as tall as that central one. And that, folks, is the Notan using the lighter version of my composition and done with the brush. That is it. Again, does not take very long, even when I'm talking. Does not use very much paint. I used that quarter size daub of black for the entire project, both the one with the knife and the one with the brush. When you're done, take the paper towel to the brush and wipe it to remove the excess paint. Then you can use the silicone jar like we've talked about to clean out that excess. All you have to do to clean the knife, again one of my favorite things about palette knives, especially out in the landscape, is all I have to do is wipe it. And do that fairly soon after you paint. You can see I've had this knife for a while. Let's see if I can catch the angle. And early on when I was using it, I was not as good about cleaning it. So there are some little bits of paint that have dried on there. And I just haven't worried or obsessed about that too much. But the same knife, same brush will last you for quite a long time. So again, what I want you to go do now is take something that's about the size of these, about a 5 by 7 surface, divided into four. And I want you to practice with your chosen tool, whether it's the knife or the brush, coming up with four different variations in no tan of that composition that you've been working with. So explore four different possible ways to group the grays with the darks and with the lights. Thanks again.